Ladies and gentlemen, this is Adam Kokish here at the California State Libertarian Party Convention with Nicholas Wildstar, candidate for Governor of California. Just heard an awesome debate with him and Zoltan Ishfan here in Long Beach. And Nicholas, it was, it was awesome to see you perform like that. But for our viewers who aren't familiar with your backstory, you know, what's your connection to California and what qualifies you to be governor? Absolutely. Well, I moved to California from Wisconsin to pursue a career in music. So I am a dream chaser and that's why I moved here. And a lot of people move here from out of state or out of the country to build a living for themselves and be able to pursue any type of line of work or whether it be one is readily available or one they have to build themselves. So this is a great place to come and build opportunities. It's just fleeting from the state. And we see that happening mainly due to the overtaxation, the overregulation, and it's not only chasing businesses from out of the state, but people who come here trying to provide for themselves or their family. So making the state more affordable is one of the first things that I plan to do as governor of California. So I would like to eliminate the state's income tax, a great majority of which goes to funding state employees. Uh, there's thousands here in the state that have six figure incomes and that needs to come to um, be, needs to be brought down and reduced so that's my goal and one of the first things that I plan to do as governor and um, one of the main reasons why I feel like I qualify for the position is because our state representatives are just supposed to be people people they're supposed to be liaisons for us we the people and the businesses or um, deal with the social issues that happen in our community, whether it be housing, education, or whatever the case may be. But we've gotten so far off kilter because the majority of politicians in office right now, their, their agenda and their own um, position on the issues has to deal with their own personal balance, their own um, prejudice. So government shouldn't be involved in marriage. They shouldn't be involved in um, kids having to get shots in order to go to school. So all of these issues that we put on the government's shoulders, they shouldn't be deciding on at all. So if we can get back to the basics on upholding the Constitution, then I really feel like government will prove its purpose, in which case more people will want to um, continue to support it. Well, I, th I thought the purpose was to get people to withdraw their support from government. That yeah, yeah. The, you realize that the purpose of government is exploitation. Eventually, we don't need it. Absolutely. Now, I'm from California originally, born and raised, and I, I moved to Arizona partly because I was afraid that California was going to drop off into the ocean because of its debt and fiscal burden and irresponsibility in the state government and so, so many other problems that you face as a state here. And most libertarians in the rest of the country look at California and we, we just sort of laugh, you know, like the, the, the Socialist Republic of California. You're, you're running as a libertarian here and, and a big part of your campaign is actually doing grassroots individual outreach. Absolutely. Is there a unique challenge in just an overwhelming liberal state like California and and what do you find is successful in connecting with people actually it, it's been a great success because the majority of the people are liberal they want to be free they don't want the government involved in their choice whether it be marriage or um, a substance that they choose to put inside of their body so that's what made uh, that's what's made California a great place for libertarians to be actually make their make their mark um, so I'm hoping to do that in a 2018 election and then talking to people and um, expressing the ideas of libertarianism and minimize government. Uh, they're embracing it full heartedly. So they're primed and ready. And I really feel like libertarians can't be afraid of wanting to turn the state gold. So Zoltan put you on the spot on uh, in this debate on the issue of student loans. And you came back with a very libertarian answer and you know as, as libertarians we want fiscal responsibility we want p individuals to be responsible for for their economic decisions but what you would you the way you talked about student loan forgiveness essentially or I, I think you use different terminology to make it more uh, more actually in line with libertarian principles but that was a really refreshing take on it based on the idea of the loans being fundamentally fraudulent why do you think student loans are fraudulent and how is it an appropriate libertarian promise to say we're going to wipe this debt off the books. 
Well, I've worked in financial management for the past four or five years before running for governor. And that was one of the things that I did was help people that were struggling to pay their student loans, pay their credit card debt or their mortgage debt. And <clears throat> excuse me. It's just very difficult for them, especially here in the state, where someone making $100,000, if you have a family of four and live somewhere like Sacramento or San Francisco or some parts of L.A. or Orange County even, it's you're barely making it. You're living paycheck to paycheck. So It's, it's almost mathematically impossible for most people to pay off the student loans. Precisely. And the loan issuers know that. They knew that these loans were predatory and the majority of them were issued to students fresh out of high school. They, they just want to have an opportunity to get into, their, uh, get into a college of their choice and have an opportunity to experience higher education. However, they're not reading the fine print. So there's an element of de deliberate deception that you think would disqualify those as legitimate debts. Exactly. And this has already been proven through investigations into companies such as Naviant, who's being sued right now for the federal government for fraudulently, uh, fraudulently inflating these loans that they're issuing to borrowers. So my goal as governor is to reduce the amount of debt in the state. So uh, one of the first things that I will do will be auditing the state's finances. And if I come to find out that these loans have been fraudulently issued, which I'm pretty uh, confident will be proven, then I will let the people of the state know that that debt will be discharged and the issuers of those loans will be held accountable. They're, that's criminal activity. If I was to issue a loan to you, you know, <laughs> under the guise of usury um, and deception, then I'd be a criminal. There shouldn't be any difference between you or I in them, our elected representatives. So um, being a person of the community and having no um, special interest with any unions or uh, groups or anything like that, then my integrity and my, <clears throat> my goal to serve the people wouldn't be untainted. Well, I'm just gonna throw one last little curveball at you here. I'm gonna ask Zoltan the same question because okay. it didn't come up in the debate. And this is something for me, you know, looking at fundamentally rethinking the concept of government uh, as part of the global conversation right now. I'm really excited when I see California is going to be voting this fall. I know it's a long shot to cut up itself into three different states. Absolutely. Now you look at that nationally and go, oh crap, you're going to have six liberal senators instead of two liberal senators out of California. And I know it's a little more complicated than that, but that's the, the gist of it. But there's also a significant movement now in California to simply secede from the union. Right. And you mentioned Jefferson, the state of Jefferson in Northern California wanting that independence, very exciting movement there. Absolutely. It still, still has life decades after it started. But for you, real specifically, as governor, on the question, do you support California breaking off, seceding from the union, or splitting up into three different pieces? Well, I would hope as governor that I would make the state more attractive by reducing the amount of regulations and taxes that are um, propelling these people to want to separate away from the state and create a new state. Um, however, I would be beholden to uphold... Well, also, that's, that's, that's a perfect political answer. I just want to point this out. His goal is to be such a good governor yep. that everybody wants to stay in California right. because it's so free and so <laughs> prosperous that the idea of splitting up is unnecessary. Is that correct? Right. Okay, like, good. You know All right. Now, as, as a temporary thing, I'm with you there. That's, <laughs> that, that's the best answer. Let's make a libertarian. California is so libertarian. It's not an issue. Exactly. But secession, independence for California, what's your take on that right now? I would definitely support it if that's what the people of this state wanted. Um, the reason why the Jefferson um, initiative has picked up steam is because they issued the proper documentation, their Article 4, Section 3 request to the Senate here, and they denied it. So the legislative body pretty much refused the people of the state an opportunity. We don't want to lose the tax revenue. Exactly. So now that case is being argued in federal court, and if it ends up a Supreme Court case, could end up being one of the dominoes that pushes, starts this effect to where every state in the union will choose to uh, break off and create more states. So um, I think it would be a benefit for the people of California as well as the country. We'd have a 51st state and one that would m more than likely 
being uh, the idea, the true idea of what our nation's founders intended for this country, opposed to what we have now, a tyrannical, overbearing, authoritarian government that wants to control every facet of our lives. We need to stop the nanny state and bring back more autonomy. Nicholas Wildstar, ladies and gentlemen, what's your website, sir? Wildstar, 2018.com, W-I-L-D-S-T-A-R, 2018.com. Thank you. Thanks so much, brother. That was hey, perfect. That's awesome. meeting you. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube. And you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at thefreedomline.com and we'll share it on my feed.